Hello, good morning. Welcome to the class. All right, so um, if you can hear me, just signify by a wave of your hand and I'm fine with it. My name is Joy Agago, and I'm working with Overseenesses to provide um, free IELTS classes for you. I'm a registered nurse and midwife in Nigeria. I'm a registered UK nurse as well. I am working at the moment, and so there's going to be like a bit of um, some rescheduling with some of our classes with time. The good thing is we will send a notification to let you know when there are modifications to the timings for our classes. For those of you who have your videos off, if you come into the class, please, I would like that you let me know that you can hear me. Just put your video on, wave your hand, I will not be distracted, no worries. Or you can just go there and type. Just type in the chat that you can hear me and that will be it. So this morning we are going to be talking about IELTS reading. I'm going to be taking IELTS academic reading. All right. Now the IELTS academic reading is made up of different question types and you have 40 questions to answer in 60 minutes. There's no time given for you to transfer your work, unlike the listening test. Therefore, answers should be directly written in your answer sheet provided as you go along. The words of the reading text generally are between 2,000 to 2,750, taken from different topics, but they are all of general interest. They are non-professional, and if there are unfamiliar words that are used, there will be glossary at the end of the whole reading text to give you like an explanation or the meaning of the word in the context in which they are used. There are various questions, question types that you will see, and that's what we are going to be discussing today. Okay. One of them is the multiple choice questions. The multiple choice question. These kind of questions, you will find them on both academic and on the general test. For you as a nurse to relocate, especially to the United Kingdom, you use, you will be writing the academic test. So you definitely come across the multiple choice question. There's no escaping you will find this type of question. So you need a lot of practice to do with them. And then you get used to how they are. So there are about three types of multiple choice questions that you will find in your academic reading test. We have the one that they will ask you to choose one answer out of four options, choose two answers out of five options, or choose three answers out of six questions and um, six options. The most common that you will find is for you to take one option or choose one option from four options. You may also have two different forms of questions, which is either for you to complete the sentence or to just pick an option like an A or B or C or D or an I or I, I, depending on what the question type is. Now, the MCQ test, which is otherwise known as the multiple choice questions, you will get to hear me use MCQs maybe more, um, is going to test your ability to understand the main ideas, the context in that your text. Your ability to understand the main ideas contained in the text and 
to look for specific information. You will need to quickly identify the main idea in order to locate the correct section of your text. So when you do this, it will seem like you have two or three options that are outrightly wrong. For instance, you have four options and you have to locate the main ideas. When you do this already, you find out that there are two of those options that looks outrightly wrong. So you rule them out in what we call 50-50. Now you will be left with two options if you had four options before. When you are left with two options, those two options sometimes may seem as if they are both correct. But if you have a good look at them, there is a word or two words. There's a phrase or something or an adjective that makes the difference. For instance, you may have two options where one is saying, however, the other is saying a but. You have to know that there are two different things. However, and but is what makes the difference in those two options. So when you have those two options with you, and at the end of the day, maybe you don't seem to still find your answer, what do you do? You make a guess. Make sure you don't leave any blank spaces in your reading test. IELTS is not a negative marking kind of exam, unlike what we have heard or unlike what people say. You don't have to leave any space. Have a guess, especially where you already ruled out two and you are left with two. When you have a guess, you have a 50% chance of getting the correct answer. You may be lucky, you may be favored, who knows? So it's best for you to have a choice. But before you do this, ensure that you have done the other parts of the reading test and you still do not find the answer, then you can come back and have a guess. Now, some people will tell you no, not to guess. But I will tell you, yes, you should guess, especially where you have been able to rule out your answers. I hope you understand. Now, there are common problems that you will find with the IELTS reading test, especially with the MCQ. So this morning, we'll be talking about maybe some of the problems and then our tips on how to overcome these problems and get the right answers. The reading text, reading your text before your question. Many of the students or many of the candidates go ahead to read the text before they read the question. Now, when you read the text before you read the question, I will give you an illustration. It's like you having a bowl of chocolates and there are different names of these chocolates in there. The question eventually is going to ask you to choose a particular brand of chocolates. But on you seeing this box of chocolates, you have decided to just have a look and you are opening and opening and you are seeing, you are rolling and rolling, turning over the basket or the bowl and you are seeing different types of chocolates. You don't know any familiar one. You don't know any particular one that you have been asked to choose or to pick out. That's the way it is when you read your text before you read the questions. When you read the text in the IELTS reading text before you read the question, what you are doing is you are reading blindly. If you do this, you are reading blindly because you are not sure what you are looking for. You also waste a lot of time because you will have to read the questions again, then you will come back to the text. And so you just wasted precious time on doing that in the first place. What do you do? Read the questions before you read the text. When you read the questions before you read the text, you do what we call focused reading. You are reading the passage or the text with a focus. You are looking for something. You have a bowl of chocolate before you and they have asked you to look for maybe twilight. And all you do is, as soon as you open this bowl of chocolate, your eye is looking for twilight and you pick out the twilight 
and you have it on your hand. You have your answer. But if you did that before, if you had gone into the chocolate just looking before, you don't know what you are looking for. Remember that one thing about the IELTS reading text is they are very, very uninteresting topics. They sometimes maybe talking about rocks, maybe talking about a quarry, talking about events that took place long before many of us were born, talking about, you know, imaginary things that you don't know. So it's not like they are interesting topics. No, they are not. If they were interesting topics, maybe you will, you know, have like um, an interest in them and you will love the story and all of that. But because they are boring, if you try to read before the text, before you go to read your answer, you will even forget. Before you go to read the, the questions, you will forget. So my first advice to you this morning is when you see your multiple choice questions, go ahead, read the questions first before you read the text, before you read the um, passage. I'll be using text in place of passage, all right? More like a synonym. So you'll be reading blindly if you do the latter. If you read first the topic, I mean the, the passage, before reading the questions, you'll be reading blindly. Rule that out. Do not read blindly. Read the questions first, then go to the passage. That way you are expected to just pick your main idea. You are expected to just look for the answer, and that will be the end of it. Okay? All right. Um, also, another of the um, trick or a tip that you need to know is the fact that you should not be on the lookout for word for word. Don't look for same word in your reading text with what's on the question. Don't be tricked by the examiners. They will use what we call distractors, especially keywords from the questions that look the same as the text. Don't fall for it. Generally, the whole aim of the IELTS is to help you develop vocabularies, to help you have what we call synonyms, rephrase them or paraphrase, use words that are nearest in meaning. They always want you to use your own words. Now, you're coming to the UK from the African countries, from the underdeveloped countries, or from Asia, where they believe that English is not your primary language, it's not your first language. They want you to, you know, be able to express yourself in English. You know, you are coming to talk with patients, you are coming to listen to them, you are coming to like interact with your colleagues as well. You are coming to write other exams in the UK. They need you to understand the fact that you don't always say the things that you are told. You always say what you understand from what you are told. So the examiner said this exam question, they use certain words, they use certain keywords, and they expect you to understand that these certain keywords can change in the course of your explanation. So they go ahead of you to use these synonyms, all right, in the explanation or in further asking you questions so that they can grade you, they can judge you, they can rate you on your understanding. That's the aim of the whole IELTS test. And that's the reason why you will find these synonyms, you using them in your speaking test, you having to listen for them in your listening test, you having to look out for them in your reading text, and you having to use them to write. You're coming to write report. Don't think that when you come from Nigeria, there's no more report writing here. No, the simple truth is you are coming to write even more complex reports with your nursing care in the UK than you will write back home. The words may be few, but the information will carry more than what you are used to back home. I'm telling you this because I'm experiencing it at the moment. I have been able to practice back home for several years before I relocated, and I've been able to make comparisons between the two. Okay, so you look out for synonyms. You watch out for words that are closest or nearest in meaning. If you don't know anything about the IELTS topic, 
don't panic. It's just a reading test. It's not a test of your knowledge at all. I got a, a, a test in the course of my writing, in the course of my reading in 2018 when I wrote my IELTS test. The reading test was about some machineries that I knew nothing, I had no idea about. That was the first passage that I got. And it was, it made me quite uneasy. And um, I was able to finish, but I wasn't sure. I wasn't sure, uh, so sure. At the end of the day, I passed, but I was moved. I was like shaking. I was anxious. It's okay to be anxious, to be a bit anxious when you're writing the IELTS exam. It's normal because you've never done this. And with the stories that we have heard about IELTS tests, it makes it really difficult for us, especially Nigerians, to go into the exam hall to write these exams without being unsure, so it's expected. It's not a cause for concern. What cause for concern is when you let the anxiety take over you and you are unable to finish your test. So please don't panic when you see questions that you are not familiar with, okay? In your mind of mind, when you read, one of the advantages of reading the questions before the test is the fact that it helps you to predict your own answer before you even see it. So when you see it and they have used synonyms, because you have a ready-made answer or a close to its answer, you will identify and pick it on time. So try as much as possible to predict the correct answer before you read the text. It will help you to find it more quickly. Before deciding on your answer, always go back and carefully read the question before you make your choice, before you make your final decision. The answer will be in the same order as the text. What does this mean? When you have questions one to five, for instance, and you have paragraphs one to seven, if for adventure you have found the answer, to question one on paragraph three, please don't go to paragraph two to look for answers to number two or to question two or go back to paragraph one. Are you getting me? So you just need to keep going forward. The answers in multiple choice questions, they come in the same order as the text. That is to say that if you find the answer to number three in paragraph four, look for, and uh, maybe in sentence one, don't go back to sentence one again of paragraph four for number four answer. Go forward, keep moving. That's the way it is arranged. You might be asked about some facts or opinions. Facts, you know, are things that are always true. Those are facts, but opinions are things that can that are just what people think. Facts are always true, or you cannot disprove it. There are things that are, they, they are standardized, they are just there, they are just basic. But opinions are things, thoughts of people, people's suggestions, people's you know, thoughts and all of that, what people think about something. You may come across this in your reading text, especially in the MCQ. So you need to be careful what facts are and what the opinions are based on that topic, all right? Another thing I want you to know is that if you come across a question type or a topic or a text or a passage where you know something about, forget about what you know about it. For instance, you may see a passage talking about intramuscular injection administration. You and I are nurses, and we are very familiar with the way intramuscular injections are given. You and I know of a surety that you need to, you know, withdraw the injection in your syringe by using the plunger. And then, when you are done, you need to air, you know, you take out the air bubbles and all of that. You prime your needle, all right? You prime the needle, 
then you do a check. Ensure you've got the right medication, you have your right patient, and you have been able to identify the muscles that you are going to use for this. If you were to give it on the deltoid or on the buttox, if in your reading text, you now find out that the reading text is talking about intramuscular injection, but did not mention you need to identify the muscles that you are going to use. And then a question from nowhere just appeared that you need to identify what you are going to use. Please don't fall for it. Work based on only what you have been given, only the passage. Ignore your previous knowledge of this passage. These are all distractors. They are things that the examiners call distractors. They purposely set them in place for you to fall for them because they want to know how observant you are. The IELTS test, academic test, that is for nurses from the British Council or from um, IDP, they know that we are coming to the UK to practice as nurses. And they want to train us as much, to be as accurate as much as possible. So from even the English test, they want to know if you adhere to instruction. So you need to just work based on what you're giving. Because while you are there on the wards, the doctors can make a prescription of something. And it's something that you know, that you think shouldn't be, you can challenge it. But if it's something that you think should be and it's not there, or maybe they have reduced a dosage of a particular medication, probably because the patient has um, one issue or the other, maybe an organ failure, renal or whatever it is, they want you to be observant. They want you to know the right thing. That's the reason why they have started the test right from your IELTS test. All right? So don't fall for their distractors. Don't go looking for what is not in there. Don't go answering questions that you are not asked. Okay. So this is my strategy. All that I've been saying, a summary of my strategy for your multiple choice questions or your MCQ. I have been able to, you know, tell us this morning that there are various types of IELTS reading test type uh, questions. We have the multiple choice. We have chosen the multiple choice question. And I said that the multiple choice questions are there to test your ideas of the understanding that you have, the general understanding that you have about the passage. It's just a reading test. It's not there to test your knowledge. It's the understanding of the passage. It's not testing your knowledge on the topic at all. It's just for you to understand this passage, answer the questions you are asked, and get out. Pass your exams, go your way. That's what they want. But because it's a test, the examiners have set in some things that will make you fail the test if you are not observant at all. I have said that there are three different types of MCQs that you will find. We have four options from which you are to choose one, five options for you to choose two, six options for you to choose three or two. The most common that you will find is the four options to choose one. When you have the four options to choose one, definitely, definitely, in, your, in the course of your practice, you are going to give us a feedback. You will find out that if you are observant enough, already two of these questions, I mean, these answer options are wrong. They are outrightly wrong. So you, took, you take them out, you rule them out already. Now you will be left with two options. What we call a 50-50 is what is going to happen at the end of the day. So you may also find that these are your two options that you are left with, they look like they are both correct. So what are you going to do? You do what I call bringing them side by side with the question. These are things you need to do in a twinkle of an eye. 
So you have to practice really hard. If you practice, I bet you your IELTS can be made in one sitting. I wrote the IELTS test once. If I tell you the number of hours that I got as per teaching or tutorials, you will be surprised. I only went for tutorials twice, and it was just less than two hours in both of them. I got a tutorial of less than four hours in all, both for reading, writing, um, listening, and speaking. In fact, my speaking tutorial was something else. It was not even up to 10 minutes. She just said one, two, three things, and the next thing was my rehearsal. And then I did it, and she asked me to go ahead and be practicing. And I did practice. I did tutorials in August, and as a full-time nurse, you and I know what happens on the wards. I didn't have much of time to practice, but because I got the right thing, because I did the right practice, I was able to pass my exam once. Worst of all was the fact that I wrote the UKVI. It was quite expensive, and people had this notion that it was harder. I do believe that it was harder because the IELTS questions I'm seeing now, they are much easier than what I did. That's an added advantage for you though. So now you will find out that two of them are outrightly wrong. Two are, that you have left or three may all seem to be correct. So you bring them side by side to your questions in a twinkle of an eye and you rule them out. Words adjectives nouns they can make a great lot of difference in this kind of questions in the sense that when you have a question a, um, an option where it says maybe dramatically or suddenly or slowly just that adjective has disqualified the answer okay has made one answer to be wrong and the other to be right so you bring them side by side with your question, compare what you have in your passage, and then you choose, you select your right answer. If at the end of the day, you are not able to select the answer, please go ahead with the other question. Don't waste too much time on one question, looking for what is not there. Sometimes you may be lucky in the course of answering the other one, before you come to it, the answer will click to the first one that you had left undone, and then you can quickly come back and do it. If not, when you have finished, just come back to it, have a guess from those two, because you stand a 50% chance of getting the correct answer. Who knows, you may be lucky. Please note that there's no negative marking for IELTS tests like they made us to understand. Some people will tell you that there is negative marking. No, there's no negative marking. You don't lose marks for choosing the wrong option, okay? So go ahead, choose an option. I have also been able to tell us this morning that you should not fall for their distractors in the sense that they put in the exact words from the passage in your answer, um, in your answer options. Please don't fall for it because the IELTS test is 90% more of trying your syllables, your, your um, vocabularies, your synonyms is on the lookout for what you understand. They will usually tell you in your own words. So they want you to answer it not like you are being told. They don't want robots. They want people that have a brain to think. They want people that, that can understand an information and then interpret it in their own way to still mean the same thing, but in a different way. So you should be more on the lookout for synonyms. When you see your questions, mark the keywords, go into your reading text, get the synonyms for this, the nearest in meaning words that will not change the meaning of the text, but will, you know, give you same meaning, but they are said in a different form or they are different words. Okay, that's what the IELTS reading test or the IELTS, all of the tests are basically on your vocabularies, they are testing your understanding of words for your, your, your enablement to, I mean, interpret, you know, information that you have been told in your own language. So I've given us some tips this morning. Part of the tips that I've given you this morning is the fact that I want you to be very careful. Read the questions very carefully. First of all, read the questions before you go to the um, text. 
Because if you read the text first, you are reading blindly. But when you read the questions first, you are reading with a focus, all right? And you will be able to pick what you're looking for quicker, faster than you will. Remember, you have 40 questions to answer in 60 minutes. That's, I mean, it takes a toll on us and it requires us to be really fast. So you skim the text to get the general meaning. You underline any keywords in the question. Think about any form of synonyms that might appear in the text. You read the choices and underline any keywords as well. Think about the difference in meaning between the, the different choices that you have. Predict your answer in your head, okay? And then you read the text using your keywords and synonyms. You will locate the part that is containing your answer. You choose your answer and you get out. Think about not only you know, which option is correct, but the other options that are wrong, why are they wrong? What makes them wrong? You need to think about it. So when you have done this, you go back and read the question again, mark your final answer and go your way. That is MCQ for you. That's all you need to know about the multiple choice question. If you have any question, please note them down on whatever um, question type it is so that we can go to it and re-explain it in such a way that you can understand. Finally, the questions comes in the order that the text is. That is, your answers are found accordingly as in side by side. You don't need to go back to um, um, paragraph two to look for the answer to number four when you already got the answer to number three in paragraph three. All right, don't waste precious time doing nothing. Okay? I do believe we understand. All right, so um, I'm going to the next one now. I'm going to the next question type on your reading. We have done multiple choice. I'm going to the next question type. The next question type is what we call matching headings, matching headings. In your IELTS and reading test, you will be asked to match headings. There are some of these things you will not escape in the text generally. MCQ is one of them. You must see MCQ. So matching heading, yeah, you will see, you will find matching heading as well. This type of question is testing your ability to understand the main idea of each paragraph. The first one I told us, MCQ, your understanding of the passage. This is each paragraph now. Headings are short sentences that summarize the information in a paragraph. So you have to pick the one that best summarizes the information in that paragraph. Usually, you will have between five to seven headings, and you are asked to match each paragraph in the reading text to one heading. There are always more headings that you will require. So don't waste your time saying, I've not finished my work. No, you are not going to finish using all of the headings, all right? So today, we will look at some of the common questions and common problems that we have. We'll look at the tips and then our strategy and our practice as well. First problem with this kind of question is the fact that there's too much information and there's not time enough. So usually, you have five paragraphs, for example, and you've got seven, five to seven options or four paragraphs. And they are asking you to match the heading. They're asking you to, you note, you know, the topic of this whole paragraph and there's no time. What do you do? We'll discuss it. Another problem is the fact that you try to match words from the headings to a word in the text. It's still a distractor. The examiners will put some headings with words that are exactly the same with what is in the text. In fact, that is the, the wrongest, if I can use that word. I know it's wrong. That is the most incorrect option. You won't find it. I've explained why. Because they use more of synonyms, more of you know, paraphrases. They want you to understand and explain it yourself. So they won't feed you. They're, they're not going to spoon feed you. When you see this kind of options, please run away from them. 
Although maybe once or twice in a hundred practices, you may find that is correct, but those are holding old, old this form of IELTS questions. You will hardly find them now. Some of the headings may appear to have the same meaning. You can have two, three headings that appear to have the same meaning. Just like you have two options in your MCQ that may appear to have the same meaning. Here, what you will do is the same thing. Bring the headings to the paragraph. Look for the reason why it is wrong. There's always an adjective, a verb. There's always something that disqualifies. All right? Some candidates would only read the first sentence of each paragraph, and they will not understand the main idea. Run away from those that will advise you to read the first paragraph, and you will get the idea. No. Sometimes the idea is in the last paragraph. If you do this, you will miss out. Then another common problem is spending too much time on one paragraph or on one heading. Remember, you've got no time at all. So if you spend too much time on one of them, you are definitely going to run out of time. And not finishing the IELTS test alone is already a problem. It's already a problem. OK? So what are the tips to this solution? What do we do? What, 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 what these problems we have identified, how are we going to solve them? Number one, do this type of questions first. By doing this first, you'll be able to get the general meaning of the text as a whole, and this will help you with the rest of the questions that require you to take a more detailed look at the text. Remember that in IELTS reading text, you will have a text that you have different question types for. You can have a text, one text of about six, seven paragraphs, and you have question type um, maybe of um, matching heading from it, and then you go ahead down below, still referring to the same passage. You have true false, still referring to the same passage. You have MCQ. So if you have done this type of question first, the other question types that come with this question, it makes it easier for you to identify what information you are looking for. I want you to note also another tip is that you are not expected to read every word of the text. This will take too long and you don't have time for this. So in this kind of question, you are only expected to understand the main idea of each paragraph. So a good way to do this is to read the first one or two sentences of that paragraph and the last paragraph. The first one and two and the last paragraph. If there are words that you don't understand, don't worry about these words you should only be concerned about the general meaning and not particular words, all right? So it is the paragraph as a whole, not individual words. Even though, you know, we still have people who will constantly be doing this, it's subconscious, isn't it? But you just have to be on the lookout for the meaning of the whole paragraph when it comes to your matching heading questions. Be aware of synonyms. Many people look for words that match exactly the same like I've tried to explain. Please run away from them. For instance, a keyword in the heading might be maybe beautiful. But the word you will be looking out for will not be beautiful. It should be something like pretty, lovely, stunning, attractive, all right? Other synonyms, other words that can be used in place of beautiful. If you are looking for beautiful, you won't find it. And at the end of the day, you waste precious time looking for beautiful. Meanwhile, they have written stunning or lovely or whatever else that is there. If there are two or three headings that are very similar, I told you, write them beside the paragraph. Try to find out the difference between the two headings. What are the keywords? How does this change the meaning? Which one matches the paragraph the most, the best? And then you make your choice. If you still can't decide which one suits best, move on and come back to it later. The answer will normally come on its own. It becomes easier to find as you go along. Please, I tried to explain earlier on, ignore anything that you already know about the topic. All right? Ignore anything that you already know about the topic. Don't read too quickly, please. So I will advise you to just skim 
No, don't read too quickly because when you read too quickly, you miss out the information. You don't have much time, yes, but you also need to get the right thing. In my own experience, it leads to you know, people not understanding most of the text and then you make mistakes. So it's better to do this a little slower and actually understand what is in front of you than doing it more quickly and then failing at the end of the day. Don't panic if you don't know anything about the general topic of the reading text. I've told you it's a test of knowledge. It's not a test of knowledge. It's a test of your understanding of the text. You don't have to have a general knowledge of everything that is happening. All right? It's a test just to know, you know, what you are reading in front of you. What you, are you able to pick your answer? Do you adhere strictly to instructions and all of that? Don't look at the headings first. In your MCQ, what did I tell you? I said you should read the questions first. But here, don't look at the heading first. Go to the paragraph first. Read the first two para um, sentences in that paragraph and the last. Try to have in your head a topic, a heading for it. Then when you come and you see it, it's easier for you to just grab it and you will get what I'm trying to say. Remember, it's your ability to find the main idea that is being tested, not your ability to find specific information. So instead of reading the headings first, ignore them, get the general meaning of each paragraph, and then you can go ahead. Are we okay? If you have any question relating to this, note it down, and then you can ask it when it's time for the question session. Strategy. If this type of question, if you find them, do them first. Don't look at the headings first. Read the first one, two sentences and the last. Don't worry about highlighting keywords in the text. Try to sum up the general meaning of each paragraph in one or two words. Look at the headings and identify keywords within each heading. Within each heading. Match any headings that are very obvious and that you are very sure of. Do them quickly. For the others, write two or three headings beside the paragraph. Identify the difference in the meaning. Establish if there are any synonyms in the paragraphs of those keywords, and then you go ahead and choose your answer. If you still can't find an answer, please go, go do the, the other ones first. When you do the other ones, in the course of doing that, the, the, the answers will always reveal themselves later on. Do this until you have finished your test and you will be surprised at what you can do. We are going to be practicing a lot. These are things that you can help yourself with. So it will go a long way if you give yourself some time to practice. Is that okay? Yeah. Um, sorry, just shortly before we move on, I'm trying to correct something on the YouTube channel. Okay, I, I sent this since um, some persons are finding it difficult to join us. I don't know why. Oh. I'm just trying to do the YouTube. Okay, so while I'm waiting for that, I'll just move with to the next one. Oh. Just give me a few seconds here.
All right, the next question type that you will find is matching information. We just did matching heading. Now we are doing matching information. In this kind of question, you'll be asked to match statements to paragraphs in the reading text. Sometimes for, in my test, what I saw was um, statements that were made by different authors, different things were said, like their opinions about certain things, their own researches that they did about a particular thing. And then they went on to ask me questions about matching what statement did um, this person make. What was the research of so and so person? So what I saw was um, the statement written and then the names of the people. So the names of the authors were my own information that I got. The statements could be reasons, it could be descriptions, it could be summaries, definition of things, it could be facts, it could be explanations. Oh, whatever they are does not really matter to you. You are just expected to, you know, have the general idea of the, of the, of the passage or of the text. You, they don't expect you to have a specialist knowledge in the reading text at all. So you do not need to understand what the whole paragraph is about. Just find the specific information in the paragraph and match it to one of the statements, okay? The answer will normally be contained in a whole phrase or in a sentence rather than a single word. In this kind of question, it's not a single word. It's usually a phrase, maybe like a sentence or something, that's what you will find. There, are no, there will normally be more paragraphs than the question. So don't worry if any of the paragraphs do not contain the information that you are looking for. Also, don't worry if you find more than one answer in one paragraph. That is allowed. All right? Just like your MCQ. You can find one, more than one answer in one particular paragraph. It's not something for you to worry about. Note here that the answers do not appear in the same order as the questions. They do not appear in the same order. So you just need to keep reading. Your eyes need to keep going up and down. You may still find the answer to number seven in number one paragraph. So that one is allowed, unlike your MCQ. Now, first of all, you will need your ability to skim the reading text to get a general meaning of each paragraph. You will also have to scan for specific words within the paragraph. It's more likely that you'll be looking for synonyms. You know, I keep talking about synonyms. Synony What's with synonyms of you know, joy? That's what they want. You just have to give it to them. That's what they want. I, I had to do um, an English teacher's course with the Cambridge University. It's online with the University of Cambridge here in the UK. And I got a certificate. I posted one and some people saw it. I have another certificate. That's the one that that helps me to teach online generally. I can teach anything online and um, that's it. But there's another one that has said that I can teach IELTS. That's the one I posted. So in the course of the study, because it's an interactive class, you have thousands of students, you know, studying online and we interact with each other, you know, you make your suggestions, you say your things and all of that. And someone was like trying to ask a question, person is from India about um, the, issues with synonyms you know they keep saying synonyms synonyms he was a bit confused because there are some synonyms that you find like if you go to google and you type the synonym you say synonyms for joy you see excitement you see happiness you see uh, merriment you see so many things and sometimes these synonyms do not fit in into your passage or into your writing what do you do you need to look for synonyms that is in the context of what you have been asked or of your passage. If you get synonyms that are not in the context, my dear, you are automatically wrong. There's no two ways about it. It may mean the same thing, but it's something that you can't use in that passage or you can't use in that writing. At the end of the day, you get it wrong, okay? So yeah, you should be on the lookout for synonyms. Be on the lookout for synonyms. Your paraphrases, rather than keywords from the questions. When you have found the words or phrases you think might give you the correct answer, what do you do? You have to read very carefully again. Don't just go straight ahead and start choosing or start making your choice. You have to be very sure. 
you have to go read the question again in order to fully understand the meaning to be able to decide if it's really the correct answer. Remember that your examiners are after you. If I'm an examiner, I am actually after you. And what examiners do is that they are more on the lookout for the wrong answers than for the correct answers. It's everywhere. It's the same. Don't think that uh, it only happened to you in the university. When you did the right thing and then uh, there was no applaud at all. The only one thing that you got wrong was the one they went straight ahead and the math and started talking about it. It's the same thing. That's one of the rules of life, of nature generally, of humans. We always find faults. We always find the wrong thing first. So yeah, the examiners are after you, looking for, even though they don't want to fail you, it's not with that intention, but it's with the intention to correct you in the sense that they are looking for the wrong thing that you have done. So check it, make sure it's right. Check it, make sure it's correct before you go ahead to mark it. Come on, one of the problems that we will find is the fact that you need to look at the whole text. In matching heading, what did I tell you? That you don't need to look at the whole text, Abby. First, second paragraph and sentence, then the last sentence, and you get your answer. But here, you have to read the whole text. You have to read the whole text. So it takes a lot of time. But if you had done the matching heading first of all, before you come to this one, eh? before you come to matching information, it makes it easier because you're already familiar with the first part of the first of the as a paragraph and the last part. So all you just need to do is add the middle part to it to what you already have and you get your answer and you go away. Another thing is that the answer to may not be the main, um, the, the answer might not be the main idea of each paragraph. The answer might not be. So if you are looking for the main idea of each paragraph, you will get it wrong. Normally, paragraphs contain more than one main idea and Reading the first and the last line of the paragraph can help you understand this. But with this kind of question that the answer is not the main, it may not be the main idea. If you don't read all of it, you will miss out of what you are looking for. It may just be like a sentence that is hidden somewhere, maybe on the third or fourth paragraph, and you have not read it. At the end, you miss it. This is why the onus has fallen on you, for you to read everything. There's also lots of irrelevant information. Remember, you're just looking for one small thing, one small information like this in the middle. Maybe somebody's name or somebody's town, born in so so and so city and whatever, or studied this and this and that. And that's what you are looking for. But you have to read everything. So there's too much information. And this information is totally irrelevant when you come to answer this kind of question. So what do you do? Do this kind of questions last. Do it last, because by the time you have done every other question that relates to it, you already have every knowledge that you need for this kind of question. So when you have come to see it, you already know what you're looking for. You just go straight ahead and you pick your answer, okay? Do it last, you will become familiar with the passage and it will help you to identify the information more quickly and easily. Try to find names, places, you know, numbers in the question, they are often easier in the text. So um, be aware that there may be synonyms. For example, when you have something that is like 34%, for instance, in the question, but in the options or in your matching heading or in the information that you have to look for, you may find just above a third. That's what they will use. 34%, just above a third or about a third, okay? When you have uh, maybe 50% of something, they will just tell you half of them, half of the population, about half of the population, okay? If you are looking for 50%, you will already miss it. So you need to get synonyms. You need to get synonyms. So this is my suggestion. Just because there are many different strategies um, that people may suggest or that you may want to use, I would like to just give you, you know, ping, ping, ping points for you to pick and go ahead with it. Read the instructions carefully. Read the questions first. Think about synonyms, how you could paraphrase these statements. It will help you identify the answer. 
Saying a statement in your own words will help you a lot. Quickly skim the reading text to try to understand the general meaning of the text. Then you read the question statements again and you predict which paragraph contains the answer. Scan the text paragraph you think might contain the answer for your synonyms. If you find a possible answer, underline it, compare it, check back with the question and mark the answer if it is correct. If not, move on, do others, come back to it, and then you can check it. I believe this is easy to understand. I trust God that if you follow these steps, I tell you, you don't have to write the IELTS twice. All right? So we will move over to labeling of diagram. Labeling of diagram. I'm still not able to go live on YouTube. So I'm trying to do that. That's why you see me going, because I need to do some verifications and the messages are not coming in on time. Yeah. All right, so the next thing I said is number four now. Yeah, number four, labeling of diagram. Wow, I've got lots and lots of questions. Number four, labeling of diagrams. There are three kinds of diagrams that you will find in your IELTS test. There are three. You may get, you get one, one maybe of each. You can't get the three of them, of course. It's one diagram you will get if eventually you get them. I got a machine. I got like a machine that was to produce something and there were different parts of the machine that I had to label. It was quite confusing. So yeah, it's expected if you get confused. But the only way to come out of the confusion is for you to talk to yourself and know it for of a surety that you are not here to fail this exam. You are here to pass it. So you just get rid of that anxiety and go ahead with your questions. Answer them. So there are three kinds that you might find. One of them is a technical drawing of a machine. That's what I got. It may be an invention or it may be something from the natural world like maybe them talking about um, forest deforestation or anything. And then sometimes you may get a design or a plan. It can be a floor map, all right? A floor map where they'll tell you to the north is this, to the south and all of that. If, if you practice enough, if you started practicing, you will find these question types. My advice is for you to practice, rehearse as many as you can. Get as many books as you can. Go online, search for them. Okay, so we will be discussing common problems that our candidates face and the tips to help overcome these issues and to give you like an excellent score in your exams. The main problem with this kind of question is the fact that we focus so much, we focus so much on the diagram, trying to understand everything about the diagram. Unfamiliar diagrams can cause you panic already and you lose time at the end of the day. So you should always remember that this is not a test of your knowledge on technical drawings or technical um, whatever, but it's a test of your reading skills. I keep saying this. You should try to understand and um, generally what is happening in the diagram, but just have a bit of understanding of what's happening there. Then the relationship between the text and the diagram, that should be more important to you. That should be of paramount importance to you. One other problem again is um, failing to, you know, locate the paragraphs that contain the answers quickly and losing time in reading the whole text. People also lose marks in this section because they write the wrong number of words. Many of us don't keep to instruction. I've had IELTS um, students that have done one-on-one um, -on -one classes with, one-to-one -one classes that I've done for some people, many of them that fail this is because they don't even adhere to instructions. The question says in not more than one, 
in not more than two words or three words and or a number. In not more than two words and or a number. This means you can use two words. You can use two numbers. You can use one word. You can use one number. You can use one word and one number. Okay? But we will go and be writing a sentence in a place where you are expected to just put two, three words, maybe like a phrase or something, and then we are writing a sentence because we feel it's more correct. They don't want to know. They just want you to obey instruction. Okay? The doctor says that, um, has suggested that you should do an ECG on your patient. And you have done the ECG and you have gone ahead to interpret the ECG to the patient. That's not what they are looking for. Do the ECG, even if you are going to interpret, it should be on instruction. Stop at where you have been asked to stop. You need to check how many words you are supposed to write because it will help you. In the example that we will be doing, you will find that many people will fail. At the end, you are going to do like a mock. You are going to, we, we will post, you know, we'll send you, you know, like questions and then we'll tell you questions, go and do this, maybe do Cambridge this, Cambridge that, and come back with your answers. Tell us where you failed and give us a feedback of what we are doing right and what we are doing wrong. And you will find out that some people will fail this test because of the wrong number of words, more number of words that they have written, more than is expected or more than is instructed. You need to also identify the type of word that you are expected to write. Is it a noun? Is it a verb? Is it an adjective? This will help you to find the correct answer. You also need to know that the answer do not always come in the same order that the paragraphs are. So yeah, the answers don't come that way, they are all scattered. So you need to pick your answers from here and there for your numbers. You will do the easiest questions first. Anyone that is easiest to it, quickly do it first because you are more likely to get them correct. If you cannot find the answer to a difficult question, move on, come back to it later. Try to predict the answer before you read the text. That is to say, have a look at your diagram. Have a look at what they have asked you before you go to read the text. That way you are reading with focus like you do in your MCQ. So check how many words you can write. Study the diagram. Try to understand generally what is happening. Don't spend too much time on it. Highlight keywords and labels. Get synonyms in your head, okay? Identify the type of words that you are expected to write. Predict the answer. You need to predict the answer in your own head, first of all. Then you can go ahead and scan the text. Then you identify where your information is located and read more in details. And then you can write your answer down. Very importantly, check your spellings. Here, they don't correct your spelling. So, IELTS teacher will not correct your spelling for you. I'll be IELTS examiner. If you were going to write writing, as in W-R-I-T-I-N-G, and you make a mistake and write W-R-I-T-I-N-G, the circle A and it's wrong. The circle A and it's wrong. So if you are wrong, sorry, your answer is wrong. Sorry, you will come back for the test. Well, I pray for you that you'll be more careful so that you won't have to come back because I dread the IELTS test. I mean, taking it twice. And when I hear people saying they've taken before and again and again, it moves me. That's the reason why I've decided to join, you know, people that are into helping nurses to pass and I'm just giving up my time. I'm off duty and I'm supposed to be sleeping or doing one or two things, but I've decided to invest this time into your life to give you this knowledge so you can pass. I know what's out there. I know what's happening back home because I have been there. I've worked for some years before I came over. And the truth is the life here and there is incomparable. They are two different things. So if there's anything I can do to help, I will do it. And this is one step that I'm trying to you know, take to help you to relocate. So if you help me by reading, if you help me by practicing, if you help me 
by giving it time, all it takes, by, you know, saving the money. I know of people who will come for lessons and then they'll say, ah, no, Joy, I never get the money. You don't have the money. You, nobody has the money, especially with our economy. They are not yet ready for the test, but they will want to ask questions. Somebody who has not written the test, has not even attempted anything, does not even know anything about the exam, but knows IELTS, and CBT, and all the rest of them. They are asking me questions about certain areas in the UK already, places I've never been to. You want to ask me a question about relocating to the north or to the south, to the east or west of London, and you have not even written your exams. And I spend my time making researches because, of course, I only live in one place, and I make researches for you, and then you don't end up coming at the end of the day. You have wasted my time. You have called me a fool. So if you want to really help me, it's best for you to practice, pass this exam, deal with this exam, beat the exam very well, and then come over and we can have a reunion. Okay? So yeah, you just need to practice. I can only give you tips. I can only help you to know what to do, what not to do, but the bulk of the work is on you. You need to practice. If you have practiced and you are telling me not joy, I don't understand this one. I don't understand that one. I'm not getting this right. I am happy to help. Okay? So you need to practice. You need to check your spellings. Take your dictionary, Google things, you know, read as much as possible. Listen to BBC, listen to radio, listen to watch movies that, I mean, British movies that you can, in fact, they are 1960, 50, 70 movies. If you have access to them, watch their documentaries. You will hear them, the accent that they use, the way they pronounce their words, it will help you in your speaking. It will help you in your reading. Because when what you are seeing is different, it will help you also in your listening because you are going to be listening to native speakers of English, all right, in your, in your listening test. So if you don't know, if you are not familiar with the words, the way they pronounce them, when they pronounce them, it will be difficult for you to get what they are saying. And if you miss it, you come back again. It's painful, you know, it's not really pleasant at all, having to spend the money and the time. So yeah, you need to check your spellings. You need to check your vocabulary. You need to check for synonyms. You need to check how many words you can write. Adhere strictly to instructions. The IELTS paper is given to you, and all of the instructions are written there. Don't be too anxious. Don't be too, you know, you want to be fast. I have to finish. Hey, no, just say I must finish. If I don't finish, I will fast. And you are just there. You are just writing. You are just writing. And at the end of the day, you say, ah, but I finished now. You didn't finish, oh. You didn't obey the instruction. So you automatically did not finish and you got the wrong thing. All right? So that is that with our um, diagram, labeling of diagram. I have said you should not concern yourself with what the diagram is about, what type of diagram it is. Don't concern yourself with it. Just obey the instructions. Get your answers. Get out of the exam room. Okay, check how many words you can write, please. Check how many words you can write. Check your spellings. Study the diagram only to get the general meaning, not deep, deep, deep understanding. You don't need it, all right? Highlight your keywords or your labels. Identify the type of words that is required and try to predict your own answer. Scan the text and identify where the information is located. Then read more in detail when you find your answer Compare it. I have gotten the answer. Okay, so is this correct? Compared to what information you have. All right. This will take us to sentence completion. Sentence completion, where you find in not more than two words from the text, complete these following sentences. And you're going to write more than four words. You're going to write more than two words. You can write less. It's not compulsory to have two words. You can have less. So in sentence completion question type, you'll be given a number of sentences with gaps in them, all right? And then you are asked to complete the sentences with words from the reading text. These questions are as much as um, vocabulary, they are vocabulary text as they are reading text because they require you to be aware of paraphrasing, that is using different words or, um, to repeat a sentence so that it has the same meaning, okay? And there's synonyms where you have words with the same or very similar meanings, okay? So you will definitely see this one. 
you will definitely see this one. I want you to note that if an instruction says no more than two words from the text for each answer, it means that we can write one, we can write two words only. If we write any more than this, we get the wrong, the, the question wrong already. Also know that when it says from the text, it means that you get the word from the text. When it says from the text, you can get synonyms from the text. All right? So you need to read the instruction. The word limit and whether we should use words from the text or not can change the question entirely. So you read the questions very carefully, please. Here, for paraphrasing and for your synonyms. In order to do well in your IELTS reading test, you have to understand what paraphrasing and your synonyms are because um, Cambridge used them so much in the reading test and in your listening, and you are expected yourself to use them in your speaking and in your writing. Paraphrasing is simply rephrasing or saying the sentence using different words but maintaining the meaning using different words, but maintaining the meaning. Okay, so I have a message from, all right, sorry. Excuse me, please. I'm still sorting the YouTube thing. This is the first time we're using this. So I go here. If you help me by putting off your mic, please. Some people's mics are making so much noise in my ears. Most men drive to work. Get on your writing pad. Get on your chat. When you are typing the chat, please chat. Type to everybody, not privately, please. Yeah? To everyone, yeah. not privately. Most men drive to work. How are we going to do this? First of all, Highlight the keywords on your own. When you highlight your keywords, then you get synonyms for them and give me another sentence. Complete sentence with the same meaning using different words. You have one minute to do this. I'm waiting for the messages. Let's see if what we are doing is useful. Most men drive to work. Paraphrase it for me. Most men drive to work. Most men drive to work. That's a sentence. Paraphrase that sentence for me. And I have said that you should 
um, get synonyms, highlight your keywords, get the synonyms, and phrase, I mean, paraphrase that sentence for me. Let's see if we're even getting an understanding of what I've been blabbing. Okay. Yeah, keep it coming. Okay, that's enough. Thank you. I have a few of them here. Okay. Someone says majority of men go to, well, I'm going to be an IELTS um, examiner now. You see, your sentence is not grammatically correct. Majority of men go to walking by driving. Is wrong. That's one of the things I was talking about. Your spelling, please. Um, majority of male adolescents goes to work by driving. It's grammatically wrong. Lots of men make use of their cars to work. Cars, please. Um, sister, cars. Because you have used men. Okay, men will not use car, all right? Majority of men go to work by driving on their own. Hmm, this person is really trying, all right? Okay, large number of males go to work by driving. All right. Almost all men go to work by driving themselves. Okay. Okay, so nobody really gave me what I wanted, but it's a good try. Thank you very much for attempting. Thank you. I believe that there are other words for work. Nobody changed it. Nobody changed the word work. First of all, you need to identify what your keywords are, okay? Identify what your keywords are. Here I have most. You're giving me majority, which is good. You have men, some said males, some said male folks, I think. Some said men again. Drive. You can use driving. Yeah, cars. What other words can we use for cars? What about work? Can't we say job? So if, for instance, in my own way, I said the majority of males use automobiles to get to their jobs. I've said the same thing, haven't I? But I have not used the same words. Okay? Yeah, they drive their own cars. It's still good. But if I can have another word for cars, why not? All right? Thank you very much for this attempt. It shows that we are getting an understanding of what I'm trying to say. So as you can see, both sentences mean the same thing, but different words were used. I have used 
you know, synonyms to do this. All right, I use synonyms. So for most, I picked majority. Drive, I used, I picked used. Cars, automobiles, work, I used job. So if you do this, you will come out in flying colors when it comes to your paraphrasing and synonyms. This is important because we have to understand how Cambridge actually marked the IELTS exam, the IELTS reading test, in order to be successful. The people who write the test, you know, what they do is they take a piece of the writing and then they use paraphrasing and synonyms to make many of the questions. Therefore, if you don't understand this, you will you know, be walking in darkness with no light at all. Though understanding it is what is going to give you, you know, your success, I mean, your desired success. All right. Um, this kind of questions, when we have sentence completions, what are the common problems or likely problems that we may, we may see or we may face? You know, like you, you will, from this example that we just did, the main problem here is people trying to match words in the question with exactly the same words in the reading text. Instead, you should be looking for words that mean the same thing, paraphrases, synonyms. Paraphrases, synonyms, okay? Paraphrases and synonyms. That's what you should be looking for. All right? So check how many words you have been asked to write. Check how many words that you have been asked to write so you don't make mistakes by writing too many words. Check how many words it takes, you know, and if the word says more than three or not more than three, not more than two or not less than. There's one other thing you need to understand about the words that you write. If they said no more than one or uh, two words, I want you to know that A, hey, that is a, 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 a pen, a television set, that a is a word, and an orange, that is two words already. But when you have words like up to date, up to date, words that are hyphenated, Words that are hyphenated, okay? Words that are hyphenated is one word. Up to date, state of the art, okay? When you have hyphens in between them, it's, it's counted as one word. Although you will hardly see them, but peradventure you find these things, just knowing that they are one word, all right? Sometimes questions will state, using words from the text or from the text. In this case, you should only use words from the text and not change them or use different forms of those words. If it does not say, then you are allowed to change the words as long as the meaning is the same. One thing you also need to know, which is a good thing here, is the fact that the answers will appear in the same order as the text, just like your MCQ. The answer to number one will be above the answer to number two. And the number, the answer to number three will be below the answer to number two. So remember that your answer should be grammatically correct. That's why I marked some of those your suggestions here wrong. Your answers have to be grammatically correct. All right? Because if it's not grammatically correct, then you are wrong. So you check the type of word that fits in the space, whether it is a verb or a noun or an adjective, or an adverb, all right? This will help you to answer the questions more correctly. When scanning for your answer, please make sure that you are thinking about paraphrases and synonyms. Find where the answer is located, pick it, get out. Remember to find where first before you get the answer. Remember to find where before you get the answer. So read the questions again before you finish, you take your final answer. Another tip here is for you to read the question before you read the text. Read the question before you read the text. There are many different strategies I know, but if you take note of these ones, they'll go a long way to help you. So what have I been saying? Read the instructions carefully, noting how many words 
all right, you are allowed to write. And if they want you to include the exact words from the question or not, read the incomplete sentences first. Think about what word can form it to be complete and make it grammatically correct. Predict your answer. Also think about keywords and how they can be represented by synonyms or by paraphrasing. Locate where the information is located by scanning quickly. And if you can't locate the answer quickly, please move on, move on. Read the incomplete sentence again. Study the reading text more carefully this time around to establish your answers. Check your spellings, check your spellings. Repeat with all of these sentences and you will get the correct answers as you go along. That's that about your sentence completion. You and I also know that there's what we call summary completion in the IELTS student test. There's just a slight difference between sentence completion and summary completion. In summary completion question types, you'll be given a summary of information from the text and there'll be some gaps in that summary. You either be given a list of words to fill the gaps with or you are asked to find the answers in the reading text. Your job is to insert those words that you have been given or the ones you have found from the reading text, if you are asked. There will be more than the number of words that you will need, just like you have in your topic um, um, paragraph, all right? There will be more. So don't worry when you have not used all of the words and your work is done. Don't worry about them because you have extra ones that are there. All of the information contained in the summary will be contained in the reading text as well. But they will use synonyms, they will use paraphrases, um, they will use you know, different words. So don't expect to see the same questions. Summary completion question types is only going to be testing your ability to do three things. One is to identify synonyms and paraphrases. Two is to scan for the correct information in the text and three is for you to understand the general meaning of the summary. General meaning of the summary. So you have this as your guide. You have this as your guide. They give you words, they tell you to complete with this word. You have to read the incomplete summary first, then you can go to the words and start picking them to fill in the summary, okay? I know that these kind of questions, all right, they don't expect you to have a detailed understanding of the text. A lot of people will lose time because they're trying to understand the text. Please don't try to understand the text when you see summary completion. You don't need it. Just focus more on your summary in the question. Some people will, you know, read the summary and then look for exact words. Please don't look for exact words. I keep saying this because I want it to sink in your head. So that while you are in the example, you will remember that not just said, don't look for the exact words. Look for synonyms, look for paraphrases. Please don't ignore grammar rules. I have done this. I am not an IELTS, uh, your examiner, I'm not your examiner. But if you ask me to, um, you know, rate what we have done this morning, I know it's impromptu, of course. I will rate you based on what your IELTS examiner will rate you. And if you have ignored grammar error, I'm definitely going to mark you wrong. All right? Don't ignore grammar rules um, in completing your summary. Because if your sentence does not make sense grammatically, then you have the wrong answer. The examiner should try to trick you by putting words from the text as one of the options. Don't even go near it. Don't touch it with the long stick. Don't even try People will recognize this and fly. They will flee away. Please fly as much as possible. Run away from it because it's probably the wrong answer as you are expected to use synonyms rather than matching words. So I have said that you should try to predict your answers. All right. I have tried to predict. Yeah, just try as much as possible to predict your answers. Okay. It will help you to spot the correct answer quickly when you have a preformed answer in your head and you see something that is related, you quickly pick it up, yeah? Should the gap be filled with a verb? Should it be filled with a noun? Is it a pronoun or an adverb? 
if your answer makes sense grammatically, then you are correct. You are most likely to be correct. Here as well, the good news is that the answer normally comes in the same order as the question. So yeah, if you find answer to number one in paragraph four, don't go to paragraph three looking for answer to number two. No, please, forward, ever, backward, never. If you get a list of words, think about the ones that can't be correct. All right, think about the ones that can never be a correct answer to any of your questions. Then you answer because, you know, the grammar, the meaning, that's the synonym, the paraphrasing, should all give you like teach, should all give you like um, a heading, you know, when it comes to um, filling your summary. So, read the questions carefully. Note how many words you can write. Normally one, two, or three highest. Sometimes they'll tell you in not more than two words and or a number. Two words and a number means you can write three things. It means you can write two words and one number, all right? And it means you can write two words. It means you can write one word and a number. It means you can write a number. It means you can write a word, all right? But it should not be more than what you have been asked to do. Skip the summary and try to understand the overall meaning, okay? Try to predict the answers before you look at the reading text because this will help you to have a preformed answer in your head. It will help you to have a premonition of what your answer should look like, okay? If you have a list of words, try to guess two or three answers, whatever the two or three answers might be in that your list of words, for one, then eliminate it by trying to put them in in your head. Not writing and canceling, please. Don't write and cancel. And for you to easily do this, please use pencil when you are doing your reading test. Use pencil because you can easily erase it. Okay? You can easily erase it. Yeah, so that is that about your um, completion, summary completion. Identify what part it is, go for it, check to see if your word makes sense grammatically. If it doesn't make sense grammatically, please have a rethink, check again, and you will be fine if you do the right thing. All right? Next to it is our... True, false, not given, and then yes, no, not given. I'll be discussing both of them together. The reason is because they are similar, just one difference. Just that one of them is talking about facts and the other is talking about opinion. True, false, not given is the hardest. Yeah, let me be frank with you. It was for me. That's where I had the greater challenge of having to practice and practice. And I understand how you may feel because some of my students already are saying it. All right. Before I go ahead, um, I have an example. Joy is a nurse and a mother of three children. Joy is a nurse and a mother of three children. Did we get that? If you got my question, Joy is a nurse and a mother of three children. Number one, Joy is a mother. True, false, not given. What is your answer? Type it to number one. Just write one. Your answer. Type one. Your answer. I want to see so we can correct. Type one dot your answer. True, false, or not giving. Joy is a mother. Joy is a mother. I've not seen any. Okay. Joy is a mother. I've seen two. Keep going. Keep going because there's another question coming. Keep going. Joy is a mother. Joy is a mother. All right. The next question. Joy is a mother 
of two boys and a girl. Joy is a mother of two boys and a girl. Write two, true, false, not given. Two, true, false, not given. True, false, not given. All right, the answers are coming in. If you're answering to one, write one. If you're answering to two, write two. Please put the number, Maureen, please. Put the number, Jeremiah, please. Put the number. I don't know which one you're answering to. Thank you. Put the number. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, number three. Joy is an S. Joy is a nurse and works in the hospital. Joy is a nurse and works in the hospital. Number three, that is type number three, your answer. Number three, your answer. Hmm. All right, so let's go. The first question was Joy is a mother. The answer is true. So if you wrote anything outside true, then you are wrong. The, the statement was, Joy is a nurse and a mother of three children. So Joy is a mother, is, in, is, 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 is the information. Secondly, if you wrote T as true, you are wrong. If you wrote for me, T as true, you are wrong. Please. Marcel, I've asked you to put your mic on, off, please. Joy is a mother. True, but not T. Please. If you do this in your exam, you are wrong. Please, write true. T-R-U-E. Let me say it the Nigerian way. T-R-U-E. In fact, write it with capital letter. Let the examiner have a myopia or what is it called but can see it please true number two joy is a mother of two boys and a girl no. if you wrote through you are wrong if you wrote false you are wrong if you wrote not give me you are correct she's a mother but it didn't say whether they were all girls, whether they were all boys, whether it was one girl and, and two girls, whether it was... Do, do you see where the logic is now? Yeah? You see? So, yeah, she is a mother, but it did not say whether she's got two boys and one girl. So the answer is not given. Okay? Number three, Joy is a nurse that works in the hospital. The answer is not given. Yes, the answer is not given. <laughs> so if it, I'm so sorry, but the answer is not given because a nurse can work in a care home. All right, I'm a nurse and I'm a tutor. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not working in the hospital, for instance. I'm a nurse and I work in a school of nursing. I'm a tutor there. I'm a nurse and I'm a lecturer in the university. I'm a nurse and I work with social services. I don't work in the hospital. So it is not given. Thank you very much for attempting. Thank you very, very much. So you see, this will give me the basis for the explanation on true, false, not given. True, false, not given, you'll be given a number of factual statements. So you have to check the text to see given. This probably is the most difficult, as you can see already, from just a few number of us. And we have seen the, the, the success rate so far. The problem here is with the non-giving option. Most people are not used to answering questions like this. And it causes them lots and lots of problems because they are not sure what to look for. People also spend so much time making sure that it is not given. And this affects the test. It affects your test. It affects your timing. Okay? So you will fail if you fail to understand the exact um, point behind this. One other common question, a uh, problem that we have is, is the fact that people, you know, try to um, ignore some keywords. They ignore some keywords. If you identify your keywords in the statement, then you will get it right. Three things I want you to note in this. 
so it can help you. If the text agrees or confirms the information in the statement, the answer is true. Joy is a mother confirms the information in your statement. All right? If I say Joy is a nurse, it confirms the information in the statement. If I say Joy is a mother of three boys, or I mean three children, it confirms. All right? So any of those three confirms. If the text contradicts or is the opposite to the information in the statement, then the answer is false. All right? So if I had said that Joy is a social worker, the information is absolutely wrong. It's, it's false. All right? If I had said Joy does not have kids or children, then it is wrong because the information says she is a mother of three children. Okay? So if I had gone further to say what is not in that piece of information, the statement that you have gotten, then is wrong. Okay? Now, for the non-giving option, if there's no information at all, at all, at all, there's no information, or it is impossible for you to know, then the answer is not given. Don't go looking for what is not there. Don't search for it. Don't start scanning and skimming up and down. Say, oh, okay, this one is close to it. Oh, no, 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 no. Once it is not there, it is not there. Right, not given. If it is there, it's true. If it's not there, then it is false. And if it is, if it is possible for you to know, you can't say. Because I've said I'm a mother, or Joy, uh, they have told you that Joy is a mother, but they have not told you whether Joy has two girls and two, but they've not said it, so it is not given. Okay? They have said that Joy is a nurse, but they have not said anything about where Joy is working, so you don't know whether it's a care home, whether it's a hospital, whether it's a school, you don't even know. You don't have any information about it, so it is not given. Are we good to go? Do we understand? So true means that the information is the same. It is just similar. Then it is false. It is similar, it is false. Remember that we are dealing with factual statements, factual information here. So there's no room for you to assume anything or to complete it for the person. Many people will argue with, um, you know, with this kind of question. But please don't argue with the question itself. You're not arguing with the question. If it's there, it's there. If it's not there, it's not there. If you can't find it, then it is not given. Okay? So, um, if you find out that an information is not given, for those of us that may ask, why is it not given? An information may be there, but it's not complete there. It's not complete. If it's not complete there, if it's not completely what it said, then it is not given. And if it is the opposite of what it says, so true and false are very easy for you to choose. Just the same way yes and no are easy for you to choose. The non-giving option, the not giving is the major challenge. That's the major challenge that we have. That's the major challenge that we have, the not giving option. So you need to be very careful. You need to make a choice. You need to, you know, be aware that this is what you're doing. This is what I'm on the lookout for. So you don't end up guessing. Don't guess for them. Don't complete it for anybody. Just go ahead, pick what is there, and get out. Please, for you to do this, I want you to ignore any information you already know about the topic. I gave us an instance when I explained about the multiple choice question. For instance, you see a question that you know very well about. We are all nurses, thank God. So, um, you understand that for you to do a wound dressing, for instance, when you come in into the patient's environment, you have to, you know, put the screen or shut the door, switch the fans on, switch off this, switch off that, and then you have to put on your gloves, you know, it's a sterile procedure and all of that for wound dressing, open wound dressing. And then the information is not saying anything about you wearing gloves. Okay, and in the options, they have not put wearing gloves. Meanwhile, you didn't see it, but you know that you wear gloves to do dressing, don't you? Please don't go and put wearing gloves. Don't go and say it's true or it's yes. Because you are working based on the only thing you've been given. 
you are working on what you have been asked. Nobody is telling you to make your suggestions or make your corrections or, you know, say your opinions. No, keep it for your writing task too. Forget about it in your reading. It's not necessary. It's not needed there. You don't need to, you know, go ahead with anything that you already know. A pre-knowledge of that topic is not needed at that point. You're only allowed to work based on what you've been given. If you do anything other than that, I promise you're going to fail the test. So for you not to fail, you need to, you know, adhere strictly to instructions. So ignore whatever you know about the topic. Don't make any assumptions. Identify any words that qualify the statements. For instance, when you have, when we have um, most men, all right, most men drive to work in that our instance. And they are asked, they have now come to make a statement like, um, all men drive to work. That most, okay, and all, those, that, those adjectives, they are the ones that qualify the men that drive to work. If the statement says, all men drive to work, what do you say? It is false. Because it is most, not all. If it is most, it means they're not all. You have a statement where you have, the man is a British, okay, no, the man claimed he is a British citizen. He claimed he is a British citizen. And then you have on your options, you now come and, and um, you come down and you find that they, they have written that the man is a British citizen. Is he a British citizen? Is he? He claimed, thank you. He claimed, he claimed to be, but he is not. But because you have seen, you know, that claim has qualified the British citizen. So if you go ahead and say, yes, Abba, British citizen, British citizen, eh, it's correct now, all oh, now the same thing, the same thing and the same thing. Oh, you will fail, no? So please, make your choices correctly, all right? Be very logical in your thinking. You need your logical thinking cap to be switched on when you get to especially this true false not given. All right. Another question or another statement can say um, that um, Coca-Cola has always made its drink in the USA. Coca-Cola has always made its drink in the US of A. So when I come down and I say Coca-Cola has mainly made its drink in the US of A, um, I have adjectives there. I have my adjective always and mainly. All right? The adjective always means that, yes, if the answer, if they ask Coca-Cola has always, yes, it is yes or it is true. But mainly, it is because it's, it has always made. So it means that it's, it's only made in that place. I mean, the Coca-Cola is, you know, um, is always made in the, U, in the US. So you can't say mainly, because when you say mainly, it means that there are other places that Coca-Cola is being made already outside the US. So, yeah. so you need to be very, very logical with your thinking. Be careful when you see verbs that call you beautiful, stunning, all those, all right? There'll be at least one of three. That's one point you need to know. In your reading test, when you see true, false, not given, for sure, there will be an answer of true, false, not given in all. The three of them must appear, okay? The three of them must appear. If you have a question that you have answered maybe five, and there's only true, 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 true. Oh, you are wrong. Oh, there's something wrong. Or oh, there's only false, false, false. Or only true, false, true, false. Or only true, not giving, true, not giving. Or false, not giving. The three of them must appear. So you need to know that so that you you you, you can easily refer back to um you know this lesson and say, ah, no, Joy said it must appear. So when you don't find it, then it is wrong. Okay. All right. So the next one and um, one of the other tips I would like you to know is that you need to skim and scan the text to find the final answer. 
you have to read the appropriate part. Read the appropriate part of the text very carefully so you can match your meaning very well and not words. Usually, this, is, this has to do with matching of the words, matching of the sentence, the whole, the complete statement itself as a whole, not one of them, not one word, okay? All right, so, but I want to tell you that if, for instance, you can't find the answer, you have tried and tried and tried and you can't find it, the answer is not good. You have checked up and down, it's not true, it's not false, and it's not yes, it's not no. The answer is not given. If you don't have any idea, if there's no idea in, of it at all in that place, the answer is not given. And another good news with this is that the answers are in the same order that they appear in the text. So don't waste your time going back and forth. Keep reading on. Just keep moving forward and don't move backwards anymore. Now, the difference between the true force not given and yes, no, not given is the fact that the true force not given, they deal with um, opinions, all right? I mean, the yes, no, not given deals with opinion. And then true force not given, they are facts. Joy is a mother, is a fact, okay? From the example that I gave you. Yes, no has to do with opinion. Somebody has suggested something. Somebody has said something, it can be yes, that this person says so and so. No. The person did not say so and so. Not given the person says something, but this is not the complete statement, or this has not come out of what the person said. All right? So what have I been saying about true, false, and not giving? Please read the instructions very carefully, and make sure you know whether it is yes, no, not giving you have been asked, or true, false, not giving you have been asked. I gave a student an assignment on yes, no, not giving, and she gave me answers of true, false, not giving automatically what? You are wrong. If I give you an assignment of yes, no, not giving, and you write true, false, not giving, automatically you are wrong. And there's nothing anybody can do about it. Okay? So you need to know. And please, don't go and write Y, N, N, G. Please. We have done that. I'm not going back to it. Don't do Y, N, G, and the rest of them. Yeah, try to think of synonyms that might be in the text as well. It will help you to identify matching part of, of the text, okay? So you match the statement with the correct part, ensure that you have chosen the right option, and if you can't find the answer, please mark it as not given. If you are really, really, really unsure, mark it as not given. If it is yes, write your yes boldly, and if it is no, write your no boldly. I want to briefly see your question. Questions, please. Questions. We've got a few minutes to go. Questions, please. Type your questions if you want to. But if you've not, you should have typed it before now. If you've not typed your question and you have a question, just raise your hand, put up your mic on your mic and ask your question. Thank you. Okay, sir. Ask your question, Mr. Joel. Ask your mic. Please unmute your mic. Ms. Joel, Ms. Agabu, good morning. Good morning, sir. <laughs> Thank you very much for joining us. <laughs> you are doing a great job. Thank you very much, sir. God bless you, Mama. Amen. I hope uh, as you are taking us through this, you will also be available to help us through when we want to me meander through and join you there. <laughs> of course, I'm doing this and I'm 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 helping. Uh, if you check on overseeing nurses where you had to log in and all of that to join. It's actually an organization that tries as much as possible to assist nurses. We recruit nurses for the UK, okay? We help okay. nurses to relocate to the UK and we offer you free IELTS because we know that IELTS is one of the major steps. I mean, it is, it is the most difficult, isn't it? It's the most difficult stage. So yeah, we help you to pass your IELTS with your help and then we help you to relocate as well. So if you have everything that is required, of course, we will like that as soon as you pass your IELTS, the process is starts. Yeah. So we will be available to help you just you know, you have the email, you can always send it, you have our contacts, you can always call us, you know, and yes, we are ready to help you relocate. Okay, thank you very much. 
You're welcome, sir. Yes, next question, please. And uh, Marcel, Marcel, you can put your mic on now. I've asked you to, yeah. Good morning, Joy. I'm Good Marcel morning. from Cameroon. Okay. You are, welcome, you, are really, you are really doing a great job. I'm Thank very, you very, very much. Thank you. I really appreciate what you are doing, and we can pay you for that. Thank you. Uh, I've taken the ice ones this year, January, okay. and I, I didn't make the required band score. Okay. I had overall band score of seven or nine, and sorry, five or nine. Okay. I was not really, really grateful with my, I'm not really, really happy with my results. Okay. I've gone through all the process. I've, um, I've cleared my CBT exams. I've uh, started my uh, NMC registration. Okay. I've sent my credentials already. Um, right now, what my main challenge is the ICE exam. And reading is the most difficult aspect I'm facing as well as listening and speaking. Yeah. I don't know how I will do to upgrade with this. Okay. With the NMC registration, certificate of um, good standing has been sent from my Cameroon Nation Council to the UK, they have responded. All what I need now is my eyes exam. That is All my right. main challenge. I can't wait to meet you in UK. Oh, I'll, in fact, I'll, I'll be pleased to have you around. You know? we, we will have a reunion someday by God's grace where people that have attended our classes and have been helped to cross over will come meet together, and, you, know, you know, have a drink, eat something, rejoice. I understand what it is out there back home. I know what it is. So I'm happy to help. Um, as much as possible, you need to stay tuned on the Telegram group as well because every information, you know, we'll keep updating them as they come along here. Yeah? Because I'm working presently, I may not be available every day for your vetting or for the lessons. But when the times for the lessons are adjusted for whatever reason, it will be communicated on the Telegram group. So you need to be on the Telegram group as well and to be in touch. If you have any questions that you need to ask personally or something you want, a one or one kind of stuff, you can send an email to the overseeing nurses at gmail.com and then you will get a response from us. Okay. Um, I'll link you up. I know you should be in touch with Mr. Tunde by now and we will take it off from there. Uh, my general advice is to stay tuned with all of the lessons, try as much as possible to practice. It's when you don't benefit from this or when you think you still need maybe like a one-to-one, -one, then we can discuss on that. But for now, we want everybody to be under this umbrella, get the general thing, do your corrections, you know, get the right thing from here. And then if you need special thoughts, then we can go to one-to-one. -to -one. So I'm happy to have you around and I hope that you will make it this time around. Thank you so much. You're welcome. All right. Um, who else is talking? No one. Okay, Jerry, I'm asking you to on your mic, please. Hello, oh, good morning. Good morning. Yes, yeah, it's good to have you live. Thank you. All right. I appreciate your effort. Um, those assisting those of us who are yet to meet you to come over. Yeah. Well, um, like you know, I've actually attempted my IELTS at once. Mm. I was on the first of October last year. I think for once of time, I couldn't finish my reading, which is I think where I got the least score. So I usually, okay, from even my practice, I discover that, you know, I usually get put off by the bulky passages that you need to extract just very few information. I I don't know, maybe I need to be psychologically um reinforced because I I usually have pages when I'm studying and I'm looking at a very lengthy passage and yeah. I meant to put that to answer questions after that. Yeah. Although I've gotten some tips after that time because I, I think one of the things that really happened before then was that I booked the eye of here close to when I became very busy and I hadn't time to follow up with oh. my friend. So I I don't know because I think my okay. very I always um had my reservation. The other aspect, I'm doing fairly well. So, okay. how do we deal with that? All right. So, um, for your reading test, I said initially, when we started the meeting, we were very few, about two or three of us started. We talked yeah. about it, that IELTS 
topics for reading are very, very boring. They are very mm. uninteresting. And the truth is, um, there's this saying that if you want to keep something away from the African man, hide it in the books. We are not interested in reading. It happens to me. We are not interested in reading, but because they want us to, you know, read this thing, get the intricate information that are in there, they have made it compulsory for us to pass the reading test. My dear, my only advice to you is um, you must read. You must read it. Get newspapers. Just read uninteresting things, not just about going to Facebook Live and seeing things, not just reading about Arsenal football uh, team or Chelsea or what. Ever. not just watching African magic movies. No, you must read. There's something I can't do for you. I, I have succeeded in giving you all of the information that you need, but I can't read for you. I can't read for you. You need to read it. If you have problems while reading, maybe you are not getting the um, the tips on uh, not giving, the tips on the uh, true force not giving. I can't, I can, you know, like read through it. I can say them again. I can explain them again, but I can't do the reading for you. So you need to read, and one thing to make it easier for you as well is to just keep reading. Just keep reading, because the more you read them, the more you get used to them. And then read with focus. Yeah, read with focus. You need to do get, download them on your iPad, on your phone, because when you are reading with focus, you, you, it will help you. And then you need like a more quiet environment when you want to read. You need to concentrate. I remember when I was practicing, thank God I have about two or three or people that know me. When I was to write my IELTS exam, I was on night duty and I was working in the labor room. Before then, I had had a two days, less than four hours of tutorial. That's what I got for the whole IELTS. And I needed to read. The labor room, I have to read when I have I've seen a patient, I've done all I have to do, step to a place. And I have my small mm -hmm. iPad with me then, and I have to read by all means with all the noise of women in labor, with my colleagues talking, with the things happening in accident and emergency, which is not far from me. Everything was just up and down, but I was able to read because I made up my mind to read. I read those uninteresting stories. Can you imagine me a nurse who reading about quarry? What's my business with a quarry? You are reading about rocks and stones and forests and all of that, but I needed it. So if you have seen in your heart that you really want to relocate, you need to read it despite, you know, it being boring, being uninteresting, you just have to read it. So Jerry, I will advise you to keep reading, please. Thank you very much for joining us. If you do have any issues, let me know and I will, as much as possible, go over the lesson with you again, okay? Um, someone else was raising hand. She's no longer here. Okay, uh, I've seen you. You can unmute your mic now. Angela, welcome to yes. the forum. <laughs> Thank you very much. I'm indeed very grateful for your sacrifice. Um, in fact, so many persons, like about two or three persons, have actually made the same thing, um, said the same thing I want to say. Like me personally, I've taken the exams twice. I made other parts, but my reading has always been a problem. In fact, the more I try, the more I go lower. So, <laughs> it is just a uh, service. I really don't know. I try as much as possible to read, as in to read more. But it seems the passages itself are even so uninteresting, bulky, you know, very difficult uh -huh. to find answers. So, at a point, in fact, this, uh, I've decided to go over to OET. But okay. unfortunately, because of the pandemic, there are a lot of pies. Meaning, if I should even book now, I'll end up writing maybe God knows when next year. And my CBT is about to expire. Okay. So I really am motivated by your sacrificing spirit. Thank you so much Thank for your you advice. Thank you very much, ma'am. Okay. Thank you. Um, Angela, I would like to say to you and to others that in your reading test, now that you have the tips, why not try reading with those tips? hand in hand. For instance, you, are, you have seen questions on matching heading. You have your tips for matching heading side by side. Why not read looking at those tips, okay? Why not read with those tips 
in your head. So you have like a focused kind of study, number one. Number two, out of your tight schedule, why not take out time every day, once in a week, twice in a week, depending on how fast you want to write this exam. Make it tight, no matter what. I'm on, I'm on here now. My kids are in their room. They can't ask me for anything. I'm on here now. My phone has been ringing. I'm not going to pick that call. You need discipline as well, my dear. You need to schedule. You need to make a timetable for yourself. Like I try to tell you, I tell people, my life has not been easy when it comes to studying and all of those things before I came over. You need to make up your mind. Now you are going lower because you're anxious. I bet that is it. 90% of the reason why your scores are going lower is because you are anxious. When you get into that example, or as you practice, you're like, I've been failing this video. Will I even make it this time around? And then you get to the exam hall and you are fidgeting. At the end, you end up not finishing, all right? Or you finish and you don't get the right answers because you are just contemplating so many things. So I advise that you should write, okay? Write with, I mean, read with more time to yourself. Read more focusedly. Read, you know, with more strictness in your timing, all right? Okay, so in the absence of any other question, is there still any other question? Is anyone saying anything? Is anyone still talking? Are there, Julius, are you raising your hand? No, you are not. No. Okay, so um, anyone still talking? No, no, no. Um, we will have another class very soon. And um, you just need to be connected because my classes, is majorly going to be as I'm free at work. Okay? Yes. Um, um, are you going to say something, Mr. Tinge? No, no, I'll just, I'll just, I'll just, okay. just, I'll just join and see what's oh. going on. Oh, okay. So, um, my classes majorly will be, you know, will be announcing the time and the days. As much as possible, I will try when I'm free to maintain the days that you used to have, but you are going to likely have more of adjustments with mine and um, because of um, the fact that I have to work. So what we do is here, we have our rota for like the next one month already. If you have your rota today, you may know your schedule for the next two, three weeks, one month or thereabout. So we will just schedule it accordingly so we can have more time. Meanwhile, if you need any work done, if you have corrections to be made, you know where to go to. The overseeing nurses um, email address is where you post your work. If you need to contact anybody personally, you can contact me, you can contact Ms. Atunde for any information. But more, all of our information are there on the Telegram group. So if you just go there and um, there's something you need to know, if you just signify, someone will reply or respond to your question. If there's no other thing, the class was um, from nine until 11 o'clock. So yeah, um, nothing more for today. We have succeeded in doing the reading test, you know, the academic reading test. I've spoken to us about eight different types of reading questions and reading question types that you will find. And I've given us tips on what to do. What I want you to do is to go all out, look for reading passages, download them. If you go to your Google Play, um, Play Store, App Store, wherever, you are going to find some IELTS past questions, IELTS questions, you find them there. Download the reading, okay, and do them. Do these questions. I don't mind betting anywhere you have issues. You bring it back to the class. We can always, you know, go over the tips again, explain them so you can understand them while we go along, but you need to do the practice. I mean, I've given you all of the tips that you need, but you need to do the practice, okay? In the absence of um, any other information, I don't know. Have you got any information for us, sir? Yeah, I'll, I'll just say that the classes will be uh, available on the, on the YouTube uh, channel. So normally what we do is uh, when the class is on, uh, it's, it's been on um, uh, Zoom live, 
uh, it goes live on, on YouTube as well. But there was a bit of a technical hitch today. So what I'll do is I'll download, because uh, it's being recorded. I'll download the recording and then post it on, uh, on YouTube uh, so that at least people who miss the class can always have access to it. Uh, and then uh, hopefully they find it helpful. Um, but subsequently, the classes will uh, just come on Zoom and then it will be on, on uh, YouTube as well. So you can join via Zoom or join via uh, a YouTube. One thing I want to suggest to everyone is uh, we will we'll try, we'll like to make it optional to you. If you want to put, if you want to come to Zoom, you would need to have your video on, your cameras on, so we can see you and interact with you. If you do not want to do that, you can join via YouTube, because there's, there's, there's no point coming to a, YouTube, a Zoom class where it is supposed to be interactive and you're, you're not participating. While we're making this class available, is if you have questions, you can ask your question real life and you get answers to your questions there. Others can learn from, from your questions, you know, we, we make it a, a, a real life right now uh, situation where you can get help uh, if you need help. So I just I'll just uh, throw that in the mix. So um, subsequently, we might not need to download the class and reload it on on YouTube because it will be streamed live on YouTube. So um, I pray that God will crown our efforts with success. Uh, just to say, um, so uh, today is Saturday. The next class will be Monday. Mr. Stevens' class will be uh, still says Monday. Uh, Wednesdays and Fridays for now. Yeah. Uh, sometimes Mr. Stephen uh, has work, so sometimes he brings the Friday to Thursday. So uh, we're all just trying to fit things around our, our busy schedule and uh, life uh, style and things like that, just to uh, ensure that we'll give as much as possible to help people pass uh, the exams IELTS. Um, yeah, I just I'll just say that. So I just pulled over to do this. I'll just carry on my journey home. All right. Thank you so much, Joy. Thank you very much. Okay. Thank you. All right. Okay. Um, I'm ending the class. Bye-bye, all of you. Thank you very much for joining us. You can download this video and watch it. Yeah. Bye.